yeah, welcome to our next uh, Asha event, monthly Asha event. It's a pleasure to have you as usual. Uh, today we'll be talking about Microsoft Defender for the Cloud. And uh, our presenter today will be Uchichiku Obama. Uchichiku is uh, one of the founders of Asha Nigeria User Group. Uh, he's a good friend and I have known him for a long time. He worked on different projects as well. Uh, he would give us kind of an uh, intro, kind of also uh, good information on Microsoft Defender for the Cloud. Uh, yeah, Uchichiku, nice to have you again. Yeah. All right. Great. Great. Uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, just to confirm, is the sound okay? Yes. It's loud and clear. All right, all right, something of this uh, background ish, and uh, we'll be up now. Ooh, so, all right, welcome everyone, and um, greetings. My name is Uche, and um, it's a privilege to be here again. So, um, I want to say thank you first uh, to the community, and thank you to our host, Hugo Fala, amazing person, and um, in short words, what would I have done without you? <laughs> nice to, it's wonderful to know him again. So again, we're here and um, again, we're discussing current trends, all right? I, I do, I like to talk about cloud with respect to, you know, what everyone is facing, relevancy, all right? So here we are looking at Defender for Cloud and uh, yeah, that's my name, Uche Chuku, Uche for Cloud, all right? You can hook me up on LinkedIn and uh, we can take it up more if you're interested in taking a career in security. All right, so um, over the world, right since post lockdown, everyone is migrating to the cloud. Everyone is doing multi-cloud. People are having hybrid, you know, uh, on-premise, hybrid means on-premise and cloud, okay? So people are having both set up, people are using multi-cloud, Microsoft AWS, Microsoft GCP, Microsoft uh, Bluemix, Microsoft Alibaba, or some are using Microsoft GCP, AWS, all together, you know, and a new topic arises. You can see here, can you see my screen just checking uh, quickly, uh, Trigo? Yeah. All right, great. great. So here we're looking at this, right? You know, this is the quick data, all right? Now, these are cloud security challenges. There's a lot of visibility into security and compliance issues. You see here, 52% uh, site security configuration of cloud resources as a top priority. See, it's a major issue for organization. That is a very staggering percentage. And then we see here, increase in number of sophistication of attacks. In 2021 alone, the average cost of a breach average was $4.24 million. I mean, that to let you know that um, there is a huge market for, for security skills on cloud computing, all right? People migrate based on different frameworks, different structures, different patterns, but they don't have the tools set to manage their operation. And there is a lot of loopholes for attack. And let's look at the next one, complexity, managing multi-cloud environment. Maybe you're here and you're wondering, why would a company want to have multi-cloud in the first place? The truth is, it could be a site uh, as a business strategy, all right? It could lead to uh, GDP, it could be a result of GDPR, maybe it's a global company and in different continents. There are many reasons why you would have a company going multi-cloud. But guess what? This is going to be the new norm. So we need to have that security solution that spans multi-cloud platform, that security service that is able to give you insight across all your workloads. You can see here, 92% of organizations are embracing a multi-cloud strategy. One of those strategies could be because of the business continuity and disaster recovery. That's another reason why, why they are having, they're going multi-cloud. Platform is finance. For example, there are some cloud platforms that have the cheapest VMs, the cheapest servers, and they want to go that route. You know, have their, their servers here and have their applications here and have this here, you know, in an organized manner. But guess what? Yeah, they are still operating multi cloud. So there are different reasons why many companies are going multi cloud. But hey, 
whatever those reasons, this keyword arises, cloud security challenges. And I introduced to you the Microsoft Defender for Cloud. All right, that's what we're talking about. Now, this is a cloud native protection across clouds and hybrid environments. All right, now someone asked, uh, I remember coming across some questions in the last few months. Hey, Uchi, are you saying we're done with uh, on premise technology? I said, of course not. A thousand times no. I said, there will always be need for on premise. One, because of business. Uh, 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 industry regulations, all right, from the finance sector to the insurance sector to the health sector, just to mention a few, there are a lot of compliance issues that demand that there will be hybrid. Again, hybrid meaning, in this case, on-premise cloud or more than one environment, all right, and you even where on-premise, your data center spans different regions, okay, so there are several reasons why you still have this, okay, so if you're new to cloud computing, do not throw away your on-premise skills. They still come in very handy. So here's what Microsoft Defender for Cloud gives to you at a quick glance. It hardens and manages your security posture, hardens and manage your security posture, detect threats, and protect your workload. This is what we're interested in. You know, just uh, uh, in the start of the year, from February to sometime around June, there was an attack on Azure AD, an on-premise AD. Actually, the door was on on-premise. You know, and it kept going on, they moved and they went to firewalls. There's been a lot of different patterns of attack. If you follow a lot of uh, news on the global scale, you see that this, this is a topic that should be taken seriously. Uh, uh, the DGOS is back, is back in a massive way. That's a distributed uh, denial of service. Okay, just uh, in month of August, one of uh, the firewall devices was able to receive what would have been the highest world record of attack. I mean, it goes on, and there are records of cloud attacks everywhere, correct? And very interestingly, this is what the last session here is what really hits home, respond and automate. Since many of these attacks are automated, our response should not be manual. Our response should be automated. So we see here, all right, so it hardens, secures, we, we runs against our specific configurations, remediations, and then does constant vulnerability assessment. And now, based on these reports coming from the uh, threat detection, we have automated responses. All right, now you can build and design, and it works across all kinds of automation solutions. All right, you can see here, it works with your CM or SOA solution, in this case, Microsoft Sentinel. Works with your logic apps, works with your log analytics. If you want email notifications, Slack, just name it Microsoft Teams, you can push it and have your automation with a push of button anywhere, anyhow you want it, okay? And guess what? It's multi cloud. You see, that's the idea. You can see it works across Microsoft Azure, AWS, Google Cloud Platform, and very interestingly, your on premise, all right? So your on premise is not forgotten. Okay, it's not forgotten. Always remember that. All right. So Microsoft Defender is your cloud solution for security posture management and cloud world protections. All right. Remember that. Remember that if you're new to Microsoft Defender for Cloud, don't worry, I'm going to show and share with us some links that will help you take this to the next level from level 100 to level 300. There are several labs and several documentation that we'll be sharing with you. Okay. Quickly, how is Microsoft Defender for Cloud different? It is built with Azure. No deployment, just enable, all right? No configuration, so to speak. Just go ahead and use. Turn it on, and you are in, all right? Built into the resource provisioning process. Okay. Broadest protection coverage and remediation with a click. <laughs> I, this, this is beautiful, remediation with a click. So you set up a policy, and then the policy checks for certain VMs who have certain ports open, and then 300 VMs comes up. Are you going to go to each of these VMs to turn it off? No, that would be a lot of work. Remediate with a click, all right? That's one of the unique features of the for Cloud. Again, it has a multi-cloud and hybrid support. You can see here, we have the agentless onboarding for AWS and GCP, posture management. Auto provisioning for new resources. I mean, while you are provisioning your new resources, 
and you have Defender for Cloud enabled in your environment, it automatically picks it up. All right. And then you can onboard your on premise resources using Azure App. Azure App is that a platform that helps bring your on premise into your Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Here we have a secure score. Secure score is a better view of your security posture of all your cloud resources. All right. It's, uh, you see that secure score. I'll show that to often. Prioritize security recommendations. All right. It tells you what to do based on the uh, compliance policies you've brought on board. All right. And then you can track and manage your security posture over time using your workbook. You look at where you are over time, where you started, what you've done, where you are. So you can do a year to date. All right. And see your progress. And guess what? It has this very beautiful feature embedded in it. It's called ATP, Advanced Threat Protection. Okay, so here, yeah, these are workloads specific signal and threat allowed. All right, so it, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's embedded with AI that looks for a lot of anomalies and detects this mechanism and then acts, so uses them as triggers and their corresponding actions that are built in. Okay, and leverages the power of Microsoft Threat Intelligence with a minimum of 24 trillion signals daily. So it's always working around the clock. For example, um, I had this session with some folks. I always log in from a certain region to a certain via virtual machine. And I did a demo. I used the VPN and I switched to three locations South America, North America, and uh, Northern Europe. Immediately, it picked it up and began to give me a lot of things to do enable just in time VM access, enable this prevent this, enforce MFA, you know, just telling me what to do, you know, just because it has recognized that there were different successful logins or attempted logins from different regions. So it's always working around the clock. Okay, just the way through. So here we go. So here how does it detect threats and protect our workload? There we go. Threat protection for all layers uh, of the cloud and on-premise, that's what it gives to us. There's a lot of detection going on, you know, across uh, our cloud resources. Uh, I will be showing up a few things shortly. Let's see. We can start after this slide. All right. Uh, this class is a lot. This session is a lot to take in. So I'll try to take it one step at a time and uh, show us uh, at each point. I'll switch to lab and I'll be back. Switch to lab and slide. Okay. Great. So here we're looking at threat detection. All right, uh, prioritizing our labs across computes, DB, service layers, and more. I will show us more on this when we look at the Defender Plan, Defender for Cloud Plan. And here we have your Mitre Attack Framework. Just a second, let me show us something on this. All right, so the Mitre Attack Framework, all right, MITRE, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, all right, I will start your education. Hold on, Mitre Attack, hold on. ATC and CK, all right? We just call it generally that. Here's a quick look at how it goes, all right? So here is the, this top section here, all right? It's usually referred to as, this is a more detailed broken down uh, cyber kill chain, all right? And it's able to classify every form of security attack at different levels, tells you what it was. So when you start, getting incidences or reports from your Defender for Cloud, it classifies it according to this framework. Okay? So there's a lot here. Again, you can come in here and look at it, and there's a lot more we can see here. So if we're looking at recording now, which is usually the first step, all right? You see the active scanning, gathering identity information, all the stuff regarding recordings, which is about studying your attack, your, uh, your victim, okay, so to speak, your proposed, uh, uh, environments where you want to maybe uh, do a pay test, you want to do a recon. Okay, so in this case, these are all 10 techniques captured. Resource development is a listed number of techniques across the cyber culture. So you may want to look at this further on, but it's interesting to know that our Defender for Cloud is built on this framework. All right, built on this framework. All right, so you can see here the effects at each point. And here it gives us here. Leading threat intelligence. It's a leading threat intelligence solution because of its sophisticated uh, design. 
and Microsoft Global Threat Intelligence. We have over 50 data centers in 140 countries. And we gather data from all of these data centers. We're able to bring it together. We have AI taking action based on certain conditions. All right. And so we have a lot of data that makes us the leading threat intelligence tool. Okay. Now, guess what? Again, the embedded in it is also vulnerability management. So we identify and remediate vulnerabilities before they are exploited. Remember, I just showed us something on reconnaissance. It is able to detect abnormally. Someone is running a port scanner. You have to detect it on there. That has information about that uh, user uh, profile. Its IP address, its location, uh, traffic headers, just to mention a few. You know, all you can get about dealing with identifying a vulnerability and dealing with uh, uh, vulnerability assessment. And here we're looking at our lab. Right, a lot correlation it prioritizes more easily with connected a lot that are good into incidences. You can look at incidents as, as a one other Microsoft service. We most likely will be discussing this in our next meetup, which is a Sentinel, a Microsoft Sentinel. It's a security incident and event management PM and a security orchestration and automated response SOA solution. All right. So uh, we will be looking at it in, in some of our next events. All of this put together helps us deal with uh, uh, a lot correlation, managing incidents, with, you know, grouping it, similar things together, and giving recommended solutions. All right, and identifying a whole lot of activities on a multi-cloud level. Now remember, we are speaking on a multi-cloud level. Let's quickly look into our uh, lab. Just a second. Okay. All right. So here, let's quickly get back. So let's go home. So and then I go to Microsoft Defender for Cloud. And um, yeah, this is my Microsoft Defender for Cloud environment right here. And you can see the few things we've already talked about is already written here. Here you can see your secure score. You see, I'm having a 17 out of 51 points. You can see I only have my Azure environment connected. I haven't connected cloud resources from AWS or GCP. Okay. It will also tell you the number of subscriptions you have, the number of access resources, access information. Now, this is a dashboard overview. Okay, as you can see here, it gives us a sneak peek into your regulatory compliance, all right, and where you are. You can see here your Microsoft Security Benchmark. This is the new rename. It used to be called ASB, Azure Security Benchmark, now called Microsoft Cloud Security Benchmark. I have 48 out of 59 pass controls. All right, this looks good. Um, there's a lot more. If we look into details, maybe look into the SC100 uh, Microsoft curriculum. You get to understand more about the MCSB and how it's a combination of three or policies or right, put together the NISFT, the CIS, and the ASB put together. Okay, those are all industry frameworks. Okay, so here it tells us that my workload protection gives me a view about my inventory. All right, this is just an overview telling me a lot about this. So, hey, get it started and tell me about this my environment of grading. Quickly to question to look, looking at what I have already. Let's look at the plans I have. Uh, Defender for Cloud, and I want to show you the things Defender can cover. You can see here, I think it's maybe later. I just told us, see, we're going to come to look at this soon. All right, this is my cloud uh, security posture management. All right, and here, uh, Defender covers uh, servers, servers here, we have to VMs, all right, and uh, normal your activity servers, app services, databases, storage. All of these are uh, infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, and the very popular container, container services, all AKS in here, all right, Kubernetes in. And then the very, very important, your Azure Key Vault. All right, if you're wondering, you're here and you're like, hey, I don't know what this means. All right, here's what I'm going to do for you, okay? I'll say, uh, go look at the AZ104 post. It will help you understand a lot about the Azure infrastructure, all right, and what each does, what they do, 
and the way they place my stuff. Like, okay? And then you get to see more and more about this, okay? Then able to also look into your resource management, your resource group, and look into your DNS. You can see here, you can decide to turn it off. Turn it off. I don't have a service here. I'm turning it off. I can turn, turn it off. But this is the section where uh, you can click services. And then uh, as we progress, uh, should we have some more time? We might look into a bit of all of this. Uh, I think I set up something for key vaults. Yeah, we can see identifying your resources. All right, so I have one key vault, I have one VM, and the rest are zero, zero, zero. I don't have any of those resources yet uh, to clean up the environment. So here it's just about the pricing. Okay, so again, this is an enterprise product. And if you ask me, uh, the pricing are pretty cheap. If you ask me, yeah, pretty, 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 pretty cheap especially for storage and container. Okay, so we'll come back here. Uh, we still have some stuff to do. Okay, and here, uh, still giving us a quick overview. Here's where I talked about recommendations, all right? It's telling me about, hey, enable MFA. Okay, it says one out of one resources. I don't have MFA enabled. That sounds crazy, right? Yes, the interestingly, this is a lab environment. There are many people, there are many companies that don't have MSA turned on. And I'm going to give you the location of where all of this lies. This is here, MSA should be enabled on accounts with owner permission. My account has owner permission. You see that? I drill into it and then it gives me more. This is where it is. As you can see here, figure logic up. This is the result. Apply. I'm doing ticket incident management, all right? Assign an owner, takes me an hour to assign an owner. This is for managing incidents where you have a soft team. Want to trigger a logic app? Do I have a logic app that will address issues like this and automation? So you see, this is just letting us know how we can manage this. And here are the remediation steps. It tells you what to do, manual remediation, if you have not set up an automation step yet. Okay, so it goes really deep telling you what to do, and then we see something like this, yes, security management course, all right? And then let's just expand this a little. Okay, internet facing ports should be protected with NSG. I have an NSG. Surprise. Hold on, let's look at this. Yeah, good. It is not, it says it's hard, all right? But I have an NSG already. I'll confirm that shortly. Okay, it's green. You can see here, it's green. Okay, I told you I have an NSG. So let's look at the red, the second red section. Management ports should be protected with just-in-time, aha, uh -huh, just-in-time network access control. You see that's where you set up uh, a form of um, privilege management, uh, or rather privilege access management into when some ports should be open and when should not be open. It's similar to the GIT VM technique, just-in-time VM access, Technique. All of these are all procedures, processes you find in your Azure administrator course. So if you're here and you're wondering what do I mean with all this acronym, you might want to refer to easy what they're for. Okay, so this is just how we do the recommendations, telling us what to do, and uh, let's look for something else. Uh, let's look for this word, four, four percent. Let's see. Endpoint. Beautiful. I don't have any endpoints enabled. Install endpoint protection solution on VM. Okay, so you can see this is correct. And I'm storing Microsoft and some malware. And I'm going, uh, I don't have any excluded processes. Okay. Endpoint protection field, I need to try it again later, find out why I should. Let's do this again. So again, it just lets you see how uh, I can, I can uh, keep. Many of these included location and real time protection. One is the discount. Quick time Saturday, then we start to okay, works right. Okay, so I have to look into this. I'm not sure why this is training, but again, this is an actual step right from here. Okay. So again, this is just to let us see the recommendation. And here is how we do with alert. What do you want to do with your alert? Do you just want to get it? So I have, because I have very little or no infrastructure in this environment here, things plan. But from here, I can build in a lot of things into it. I can use it as a trigger for a logic app, okay? 
through that for some kind of notification, email, email, SMS, whichever form of uh, service you are using, it's just all about API connected. Okay, so let me pause here when I get back to the slide. I stop at security a lot. When we come back, we'll take on the rest. Okay. Yep. Please, uh, if you have questions, uh, I'd like you to please use use the chat. Okay, Steve H. Uh, on the next area, please use the chat, drop your questions, and I will be sure to attend to your questions. Okay, I'm seeing your hands up. All right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So use the chat, drop your messages, okay? Great. So here yeah, again, this is all about, we talked about workflow protection. This is the, uh, yeah, we are coming up on that here. We can see it's a good similar environment. I'm just using the dark theme. Uh, let's put it on. <laughs> all right. Workflow protection, there we go. And it gives you a summary. The interface might change the look, all right? Tells you the resources you have. Remember, I told you I have a very, very, very empty resource. So I just have one keyboard, one server, one resource manager, one DNS. Okay. So, you know, and it's going to tell you, oh, the number of agents. This is one over one, one over one. Right here, you see 216 over 275. What that means is this not all servers have Defender for Cloud enabled. Some of those, why? It could be strategic. Now, there are different reasons to this. It could be the remaining um, nine VMs, nine servers are test servers. And those test servers are in some certain kind of subscriptions, but they don't really place priority on them. But again, is it best for it not to have the benefit of cloud? So again, it depends on your company's corporate policy in regarding security resources. I've seen many companies that only prioritize production workloads, but from experience, I tell people um, you deal with not just uh, production workloads, even the QA environment, even the dev environment, the test environment, they all still need to be secured because that is where uh, a compromise could start from because these solutions were built from those environments. So if you have a compromised test environment, it's an opportunity for someone to issue some bugs that might not be notified until it goes live. So you definitely will want to have the kind of a cloud enabled on all. You can see here, app service is 51 over 51. Container, 21 container out of 30. Storage, 195 out of 209. You see, so really they are, they are, the question is, as a company, what is your risk? What minimum risk can you take? So every company has that value, has that uh, understanding of what they are willing to, how much stock can you take, all right? Good. So we see here, my own environment, I just have really few, and then it tells me about all this stuff, okay? Yeah, I told you about GITM, managing network ports, okay? Just, we were coming from a few, few moments ago. I could just click on it here, and then I could get that result, okay? So this is just giving us more information about the environment. I have no SQL. I have none of these yet. Okay. So this is telling us about how uh, the Defender for Cloud is able to get agents and get services, get information from all of this. And then you can integrate with your CM for easy management of incidents. Just to ask a quick question, and showing that I'm not alone, anyone tell me the meaning of CM? Quickly. All right, okay, then Gary. All right, it's three. Have you have you used the trial prior to now? You have a thirty days trial. I uh, haven't haven't used the trial yet. All right, so if you want to get it, you enable the trial. You don't have to purchase the trial is there for you to use. And uh, just to quickly show us this, uh, just ahead of time. Uh, give me a second. Let me drop you here right now. So there is a. There is a resource I will be sharing. Let's just into the messages. We will use this to further strengthen your lab skills. All right. So that's Defender uh, for Cloud Lab. It's on GitHub. All right. There we go. The page on my screen. Okay. So we see where it takes us from beginner, intermediate, and advanced. By the time you are done with this, you will really be good. I mean, 
there we go. It, there we go. Now, a few things to note. Because cloud is always a moving target, some things have changed. At the time this documentation was written, for example, we're looking at uh, adding a regulatory compliance, for example. All right, the way we can add a new standard has slightly changed as we wait here. So uh, it might not be line for line, okay, but you will get it out eventually. All right. Uh, all right, let's jump a little forward. Let's jump a little forward, okay? Jump a little forward. There's my lab. There's my lab. There we go. All right, so let's quickly go back to, uh, let's look at compliance. All right, so I deal with a lot of um, Europeans and Americans and some Asians. Wow. Wow. All right. So this is a very important part. As a matter of fact, this could look or mar your business. So uh, you hear, you build apps, and then you have a payment gateway in your apps, or you have a service or a web service, and you have a payment gateway or whatever, but funds are exchanged, right? You must have this policy. You must be compliant with the PCI DSS policy, 3.2.1. For many of your clouds on this infrastructure, they must be compliant with the ISO 27001. All right, I need to onboard this. See, see, there's a new one. Let's onboard this to my dashboard. So I'm trying to onboard this. Let's go. Let's go in here. Uh, security policy. So the ISO 2. So here, I'm trying to onboard. I'm trying to onboard this, okay? Let's do this. Let me show this again. Quick, 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 quick. So here's what I'm trying to onboard here. I'm trying to onboard the new set. The legacy has been removed. Can we see this? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, you right. can. All right. All right. So this has been removed. We want to onboard this new policy just to ensure that our cloud resources remain compliant. Okay. So even if you're doing DevOps or whatever, if you are not compliant, it could shut you down. All right. So let's add that. So I'm looking for ISO, the latest ISO. So here, this is our default, this is your, uh, from your, uh, your default ASC. I think the name is changing, so it's in change everywhere. All right, this is your Azure Security Compliance. Uh, so I onboarded this just a few moments ago, Azure CIS. And now we are adding the ISO 27001. So I just come and type ISO. You see, this is the new one. All right, and I click on Add. Okay, it's on. You need to specify the scope, the subscription. I'm okay with this. I don't have anything assigned by me. Let's look at next. Parameters, no problem. I'm okay with that. Do I want to auto remediate? You know what remediation means? Remediation means, you know, to auto either uh, fix the issue. All right. Sometimes yeah. you want to see it. Yeah, they're fixed. Okay. So, yeah. So, it create a remediation link. Yeah, that will be fine. Um, System assigned, our preferred system assignment and ATC permission. You need to have a minimum of this. Yep. All right. Next. Non compliance messages. Let's see. Non compliance messages help you just understand why a resource is not compliant with the policy. The message will be displayed when a resource is denied and, and the evaluation details of any compliant resource. A selector. Okay. I'm fine with that. Next. And then I create. There we go. I'm onboarding the new ISO uh, uh, policy into my environment. And you see, we are done. There we go. So if I get back, let's go home and let's go back to my Defender for Cloud. I come on, come on. Let's go to our compliance. All right, so why is this coming up? All right, there we go. So you see, uh, it should come up. It should come up now. Uh, it should come up. I think it has to come up. Successful role assignment created, policy added. So I will need to probably log off and log in. I need to log off and log in. Come on, come on. Uh -oh. Okay.
Ah, uh, I think I have a major impact with this. I'm not close to my phone. <laughs> and I use some form of uh, authentication. Going to ask me for something. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Where is that the That's it. <laughs> That's why I never log out. Okay, guys, you need to give me a few seconds. Can you go? Can you hang? Can you manage the class while I go get my second device? No problem. Okay. Session. No worries. All right. Worries. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess he uses a uh, authenticator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happens sometimes, you know. Yeah, sure, sure, definitely. I think with security incident is one of the best practices. My brother, like, trust me, everybody that is in IT should use that. Either your face ID, if you're using an iPhone, face ID yeah. or thumbprint. Yeah. Yeah, like, for instance, in our laptops, there's a laptop I bought last week. Uh, the, I can only log in with my face or thumbprint. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, but. I, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Quickly conclude that. Conclude that. I'm this interesting story. Yeah. So I, I can only use my thumbprint to access the laptop or use my face recognition to, to, to sign in. So I just put my face, it just open. So and often, and I said it that if I'm not looking like, if I'm not facing the, the screen, it shuts down within a minute. So for instance, if I leave the table, within a minute it goes off. I find it very powerful. Let's say you're working in a shared environment and stuff like that. Yeah, okay, true. So, yeah. Go ahead, Uche. All right, thank you, sir. So, um, this should appear here. So you normally find it on this list. Yeah, so this list will keep populating. If you don't find it here, you just go back in here and then you see a list of it here. So it takes some time to come up on your dashboard, but we have onboarded it. Okay, so it just shows us, um, let's see, you see the list of what we have. So I tell people, this, this section, you can see, so we already have it, okay? This comes out of the box, we've added this too, so it's already there. So after a while, it will show up on our dashboard, most likely uh, within 24 hours. So I tell people that past things are important, but well, guess what? GRC is much more important, right? So if we're having, I was talking about payments, right? You must have this, the PSI DSS. And if we get back into our Defender for Cloud, and then we we'll move to this tab here. It's going to tell us what we are compliant on and against. Can you see this here? The red X. So I don't yeah. have any stuff. So it tells me about protecting cardholder data. I will need to meet this. Okay, this red. You see, I don't have this. I haven't met this. I have to meet up all of these reds. So this helps us to ensure that uh, if your your product is attacked, and then maybe. Uh, you are taken to court, or you're, um, you're having a big audit review, and then they're checking, did you do what you're meant to do? Yes, I have met, I'm compliant with the PCI DSS, the latest version. So you also want to come here and confirm that this is the latest version. Do you see that? So it's very, very important dealing with compliance and policy, people's data. Okay? Despite how beautiful your app is, a, a, a data breach could mess it up. Okay, so again, this is all about the PCI DSS, and here you have your SOC TCP TSP, and then just dealing with uh, control, some um, basic access issues. All right, and then we see that all of that here, and then there is your ever ever robust, formally called Azure Security Benchmark, the combination of three policies, three top compliance policies: your NIS, your CIS, and then one more. I can't remember that right now. Was well, very, very, very robust. That's one of the beautiful things that Microsoft has done. We were able to build girls up, and you see more on this on uh, trust, uh, trust for uh, uh, service trust, right? Anyone know service trust is the Microsoft portal? So we go to service trust portal, yeah. Service trust of Microsoft.com, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, I just paid the liquid house and I want to look at it later, okay? There we go. All right, so let's come out here. So this is the lab environment, all right? So again, the way I onboarded this, this 
section here. Where's the policy section ID? Here. Yeah. You were on board this compliance. It's slightly different. Okay. This thing that gives us images. So with the images, you can know how to quickly correct yourself. All right. So this is just the lab guide to ensure that you can get this uh, quickly sorted out. You've onboarded your policy. You can also create your own benchmark, just like uh, we were talking here. And you get here and uh, go to manage compliance policy. You have your own policy you want to bring, security policy, and then you come here. And there you have your own custom initiative. Okay, so let's say you work for the government, all right, or you are part of NIBS, or you are, you, want, you know what NIBS means, right? Sorry, I'm using an acronym, all right? NIBS, the guys who handle digital to stock currency, like Nigeria, you're working for NHS, you're working for stocks, and you're having to create, you have your own policies, and they're involved in those things. This is where you build all of yours, and you keep tweaking and adding and doing all your stuff. Let's not go there. That's not the object. We're dealing with uh, Defender for Cloud. It's really big. All right. Defender for Cloud is big, but it cuts across every of those services. So here we're dealing with security alerts. All right. You can prioritize your alerts how you want them. And then you can manage incidents. Now, incident management is a very big skill that must be learned. Uh, I have seen certain environments. Um, the SOC team was notified that there was a pen test going on. And then there was a lot of red flags everywhere. And you guys were just walking around. And then later they found out, oh, they were having the test. And then they had to now go back and remind before they already escalated all the incidences, you know, or oh, speak out false policies. It's a test. It's a test. It's a test. So I guess the management was also checking the capability of their soft team to also respond to these issues. You know, so again, you can all look at it from different points of view. All right, this is dealing with incidents, it has to do with that. And then here is a quick, a quick overview, full stack coverage with all dedicated detections, what your um, Microsoft Defender for Cloud can do. From your compute, you can see your compute is your server, virtual machine skill set, Kubernetes, Azure Kubernetes, um, AKS, EKS, name it, right? The EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Services, yeah? manage or manage. All right, these are our managed Kubernetes services. All right, for AWS workloads, is in. GCP workloads, rearing, on premise workloads. Someone asked, can you do Kubernetes on premise? Yes, you can. All right? Yes, emphatically, yes. Many people don't know that, but yes. So again, on premise workloads, the Center for Cloud is able to work with all of this, is able to perform those uh, security uh, services across all board. One of the key things is especially here. All right? Because it specializes in detecting anomalies, it's able to flag. Access issues is able to bring up identity issues. Yeah, they can access work together. Is able to bring is able to bring out when there is a breach, network issue where somebody is coming to run a scan. There's so many stuff. All right. Uh, let me talk about one of Microsoft services. Uh, Hololens it came out about a year ago. Hololens two. Anyone heard about that service? The camera service. All right. Not to worry no. about that. No. Okay. It, it, what it does is it studies processes and records and then is able to detect anomalies. If you are in a QA section where you know that from this bench, you move to this bench, you move to this bench, you move to this bench, if it breaches one bench, the camera will detect it. All right. Or if it spends shorter time on the bench, it will also detect it. So here we're looking at protecting our virtual machines. Yes. Decreasing the cloud story at this point, I might be a little faster because time, because we'll still be shortly in and out of uh, the lab environment. So here, yes, uh, Defender for Cloud is able to focus and help look into a virtual machine. Now, anything we know about virtual machines, it looks like this in some ways, all right? Now, your servers, Microsoft Defender for Servers, protect your servers from threats. So we're looking at plants, remember? We're looking at plants. Plants, plants. We can look at it from here, depending how you want to approach it. Defend that plant. Later, later. So I've enabled all, don't mind me. 
it is showing me this. So that this is why. So when you get here, for many of us who are here for the first time, you will see uh try where you said uh uh enable for 30 days. I've exhausted mine. All right. So here is your server section. This is our defender for service. So if you are taking the exam, uh, maybe SC 100, SC 200, and then all you are at work and you're trying to onboard your servers in your environment for Defender for Cloud, all you need to do is come here, struggle it on, and then let's check our coverage. So in this case, it's going to check for the number of servers and it needs to correspond with what you have. You see, VA assessment is off here. Yeah. Turn it on, I want it on. Yep. All right, so you see here, Defender Plan, this is the plan section for servers. My log analytics agent is installed on my VM, it's on. Hmm. Quick question, class. Let me throw something back to you just to ensure we are working together. Do you know what log analytics is? Yes. All right. Anyone? Just summary? More like uh, an audit. You know, it uh, checks in who has logged in into a system. Like it, it, okay. It keeps a check on who is coming in, who is going out, who is okay. performing an, yeah. an event. Okay, it, it does one of that. In quick summary, just as name is flies, when you have an log analysis agent installed in your system, it gathers all kinds of data from that system. By default, there are certain data that is available on your system that's just general. Your Azure monitor can just get you that. But if you want deep insights into your system operations, you will need your log analytics agent. To pick up system time when you went on, when you went off, if, <laughs> who logged in, who didn't log in, the web, the tools you opened, whatever you did, all those data is pulling it via that agent into your uh, OMS suite in your log analytics server in Azure. Now, so in that platform that ingests all those data from all your servers, your, all your VMs, it gets all kinds of data system time, utility time, RAM, storage storage percentage, key, everything about running system, it gets it, all right? That is where you now start having your KQL, custom query language, all right? It's not a write language, it's a read language. It reads based on the data you have. So, um, okay, I won't speak to that part, all right? So, but that's what this log analysis agent does, gathering this data, okay? Also, you see, which works with your Azure monitoring agent, picks up the data, all right? It says one or two missing. Let me fix, enable, so I'm trying to fix this. All right, successful, beautiful. So I've turned this on and I click on continue and save. So you see it's going full. So I've toggled this on and now all data will be gathered. I'm getting insight, I know what to do. If I'm setting looking for some, no, 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 hold on, hold on, let's save. And to see whatever I've done. Good. So if I, I'm looking at the next level, I need to set up new automation, workflow automation. You find some of these stuff in your AZ 500 and in your SC 200, right? We cannot keep you to do it, okay? This is also quite something we need to also know. This, this should be in the belt of almost every security person, all right? Depend that for cloud. It's something you must know. It will help you, all right? It will help you. Looking at our workflow protection again, yeah, we have we've been here before. And now it's able to also sync with your firewall. I don't have a firewall yet. But I have virtual networks. All right. I, I just have uh, NSG. Okay, there's my virtual so no firewall deployed. You can see that. And uh, I don't have any DDoS plan. So my, so my VM is almost always off. It's going to stay on more than six hours in a day. So here's where you do a lot of settings if you're a network guy and you're involved in security. If you try to onboard DDoS quickly, you can onboard it in here. This prevents the distributed denial of service attack. Black Friday is coming, right? Hugo, Black Friday is coming. <laughs> yeah, that is one of the days they perform DDoS at maximum capacity. Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah. another day, another day is discussion. All right. Okay, so again, that will just embody a certain defender for servers. You can see here we have our uh, agent installed, now gathering all this data. And guess what? It also works across all other platforms, even your own premise, pull this data, and then you can take a lot of metrics and logs, take a lot of the features, 
from this data that has been connected. You can see here, it's multiplied, like I said, it's one of the leading endpoint detection response. That was by EDR, endpoint detection and response, okay? So it's a leading solution because it does end-to-end, -end, okay? Even for your own service. So again, here automated self constantly running VA. It's not the one that some companies do once in three months or once in two months. And the security team sitting down watching movie Monday to Friday and then they run an assessment. No, no, no. Defend that for cloud, enable for servers, run around the cloud. All right. So here, optimize for cloud environment. You have all of these. If you've not enabled it, to tell you to enable it, just like we saw, we saw here. When it was totally not um tough to do. Uh, da, 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 yeah, this is it here. When it comes into your alerts, when it starts looking at the things you've done, one of my recommendations are that totally many things to do. Okay? All of this, okay, is coming from here. For example, JITM, this is with VM, right? So let's see. Adapting network card, this is for network. All right, so let's see. We have all of that here. And then it tells us what to do. That's how this comes up. And then you can filter if you want to filter it and then see certain resources. You can see here uh, video SSR, protest applications as a video SSR. I have not enabled it on any virtual network. You can see here, we saw here it's empty. Come on, come on, come on. Virtual network. You see here it's blank. Do you see that? So I have not done anything here. So I need to onboard my virtual network with firewall. Manager and then get the report into here, also make my action. Okay, let's go for move on. All right, very interesting. So, that's back in the 90s or uh, early 2000s, um, talk about we talk about Linux and Microsoft server and why people prefer Linux, 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 Linux. Linux. All it has a low surface attack surface. Why? Because it is all command line interface. Unlike Microsoft, that is GUI. But Microsoft do actually now have a lot of command line interface. You have PowerShell, you have the ARM template, all right? You have the GitHub, just to mention a few, and there are a lot of third party tools now, all right, that need to perform IAC functions, that is the structure of the code, all right? So again, with your defender for cloud, it helps to eliminate risk by reducing the surface area of attack. Adding your systems with cloud distortion of service, customization that fits your decision, and then you can visualize your impact and simply turn it on. It tells you all the stuff. All right, you can see here, tells you your ASL, uh, yeah, and its features. Here, yeah, this is the uh, site recovery. There are a lot of work coding when you come to security sector. If you can see all the features is telling you what to do, how we can do. This is, this is a session coming in from Defender for Endpoint. Defender for Endpoint is one of the solutions for your MCC type Defender. I would like to ask you, anyone here, do you have a functioning lab for Defender, MCC type Defender, and environment? I'll show you how to get one quickly. Do you have? No. All right. No. All right. Mm. All right, so let's do this quickly, everyone. Let's go create, uh, you, go, you have, because you know, probably you've not used it. So let's do this. Go to developer.microsoft.com, everyone. Let me use someone's screen. Who is willing to share screen with us? I'll do that. All right. And I, the average just said I've been using mine for quite a while. <laughs> I have I have four accounts, so I don't need more. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So, say so what? Yeah. Developer. Developer. Dot Microsoft. Dot com. Developer. Dot Microsoft. Dot com. Yep. Click enter. Remove the WW, please. HTTPS. I'll just move it there. Uh, hit enter. There, there we go. Okay. All right. So scroll down. Scroll down, 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 down. All right. M365. Microsoft 365. 
to your react here we go to the school now you see a special thing join us hey keep going yeah there we go join nice today okay yeah. join now okay Pick your corporate account if you have a corporate account. If um, you have, but you go, it's fine with I, you. It's fine I, with you. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. You don't have a problem. It's fine with you because of your location. It will work for you. So everything we're feeling here now is demo. Okay. So yeah, so feeling you can see your location here yeah, because of authentication. All right. Yeah. That should be N. N for country. So give me the demo name, your name you want it. All right, thank you. No, not your office name, all right? Mm -hmm. It's not company. All right, your personal demo. Yeah. Sorry. Can you move the dot com? You don't, it's not a site, it's just the name. Yeah. All right, good, 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 good. Next, uh, I accept. Can leave the other one. <laughs> okay, and next. Okay, so personal project. Now this is for, this is just, this is strictly um demo environment it's not meant for production use okay please okay. everyone do not use this for production okay it's just for uh, and the more you keep using it the more microsoft extends it i've had one for four years yeah cool all right so next all right so let's pick what dealing with security take identity platform uh you can pick anything you want pick more than one it's okay to pick more than one on a platform yeah Good. Okay. All right, so we're getting there. All right, welcome. So click on close. Now set up E5 subscription. Okay, so you need to try this again. Anybody facing this issue? Anyone else? All right, so this would work. You probably try the 29, sir. Huh? It would work, all right? Now, when you get the account you would have, or two good, the account that I give to you, the one you have, yeah. all right, you can also use it, all right? Let me share my screen from this point, okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, no worries. Yeah, so I'll still, I'll still, kill, I'll still guess the stuff. Uh, um, one minute, incoming, 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 incoming. So I think this is your account to go. Hold on. There you go, right? Yeah, yeah, that's my account. Yeah. Oh, all right, good, good, good. So let's see what you have on that other account. So there are different ways to view it. Number one, I, I like to go through this your products just to show you quickly, and then you see what you have and all the beautiful stuff you can do. I'll just give you some elevation. Let me do that elevation quickly. How do you get that? Give it a little bit of cookie. We you can see here is the administrator. Let's, let's put some more stuff. Um, I need more. Just because I know trouble. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't do this, okay? So now that's what Shugo can do here. So Billy, your product. Um, so from a security perspective now, Shugo, you have enterprise services such as this available. Look at this. Sure. So this also goes to everyone. If you have difficulty here, trust me, I'm on the group. Okay, now I'll draw user group, pick me up. You can take it off from there. Try not to get this sorted out. So from a security point, this is what you have, AD Premium 2. So you can decide to trigger, uh, trigger buy a subscription and then turn it to your Azure environment. One, that's one. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Intune. You can see full Intune is available. Cloud app security is available. AIP Plan 2. 
there's a lot of modifiers that all services have come together to form many of the big solutions we have. Here is broken down. You can see your MFA, mm -hmm. ARM, threat protection, they're all checked, check, 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 check. You have it all here. All right. And as a matter of fact, you have Power BI Pro license attached mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Okay, so you can download Power BI and then sign in with that account. All right, and then use your power BI to do all the stuff you want to do. But this is the biggest. This is the area we are interested in. So let's quickly move on and let's show you how this comes in. If we move to the security sector here. So just to show you quickly, we, we saw this here, Defender for Endpoints. So that's why I'm showing you this. Oh, we're running out of time. Okay. All right. So this is what you do. Always just come here straight. Okay. This, this is this is showing my secure core for M365. Okay. It's different from my Azure resource. So I go to more resources. Can we see all of this, sir? Mm -hmm. So this is your defender for cloud app. You open a new one. Here is your defender for identity. Here is Paul View. Paul is now live. Here's your AIP. All right. This is Defender. So these are all. Let's switch to compliance. In a second, let's add compliance to this. All right. So here is the portal. This is ATP. This is, well, this is now what is called. Defender for identity. Come on, open up. Do we see that? So you have to now create a setup. And for this, you have to have an on premise environment if you're taking for hybrid. This manages your identity environment on premise and cloud. So it will store an agent on your Windows server and then on your Azure AD environment, and then you start getting insight into activity. Okay? Here is your defender for cloud apps. Now called, it's no more called cloud, it's called MCAS now. Microsoft Cloud uh, Cloud App Security. So it keeps changing. It's, it's built on the CAS B framework. Let's take the new page. It's called, okay, it's on the dashboard now. Yeah, I saw that. So it's called CAS B framework now. Cloud, uh, cloud Application Security Broker. All right, so that's for that. And then, here is the one I was showing us about your uh who I want to go to compliance. So all of this M365 brings all these features together. I mean your Microsoft Defender for Cloud, it talks to everybody. So it, it's a skill we must have. I mean, you just got to have. See, here's your uh, defender portal. Open this. Uh, yeah, this is for cloud app. This is service travel. I was showing out before. This is for your emails. So again, yeah, we've been here. So all of these all work together, really. So I don't want to go into this deep dive, but just letting us know that uh, Defender for Endpoint is available. How do we know? Because we saw it in our subscription. Defender for Endpoint. All right, it's part of Insure. All right, so Chigo, you can you look at this offline. One of the we can just have a session and then we can do some sweet hands on, okay? Okay, yeah. All right, so quickly moving on. So again, it does the uh, antivirus protection, it's free. I remember we did audit for a very big company. This is for your Windows environment. All right, since, hmm, some interesting story, a bit, all right. Uh, uh, uh. 2018, all right. A certain UTM, UTM means Unified Threat Management, all right? It's, it's almost what you call firewall, but it's more than a firewall. Example is your know, like software checkpoint, all right? Barracuda, Portuguese, uh -huh. they, they give a report to the US stating that from certain antivirus was snooping on US corporate PC. And then immediately, and then there was an order that that particular to virus be removed, all right, for more mm -hmm. official PC. And at that point in time, Microsoft Defender then took off. So this was in 2018, 
We're in four years now and it's matured over the years. Okay. Now, even if you install some certain crack application on your PC, this will take it off. All right. So just to let you know, we have this now. This is endpoint space between an endpoint. And all of these now are all having input inside here. Inventory. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, yes, sir. Inventory. Now, depending on how you set up your environment and what you've embodied, if you are using uh, Azure VD, virtual desktops, okay? Depending on what you have in your environment, all right? And then you can also bring in non Azure stuff, all right? Create workspace, set them up in, and then create your inventory. Depend on what you see in everything, all right? It's a very big service. Believe me, it's a very big service. So here's your EDR we talked about, and conditional response. is able to look, go through uh, incidences and automate response. I'll have to skip this. I can't go in, I can't uh, stay much on it. So we have adaptive control, uh, where we use intelligence and automated flow for known safe applications. This is to protect against malware. So if you set it up here, you can see the sector. For every assessment for your virtual machines, there are people who will still want to install certain things. Those could be backdoors or uh, into your app, shadow IT. Okay, so again, so we have this adaptive application control that comply with organization policy. So here's the processing your VMs and your containers. Now remember here we looked at plans. So we have we have this plan. Always remember that that is also available. You can see that here, containers. Are we together? So you're yeah. able to look at the the, the host virtual machine that hosting all the uh, Kubernetes environment, and then you're able to see the defender for containers and all. So this is what is this is all we are seeing here. But I just to let us know that this is covered full. So you can see full, full, full. Right, so it's really, really, really interesting. I may have to post soon because um a lot, a lot, a lot. I'm barely half with my slides. All right, so I have GIT VM, just in time VM again, where you manage control certain ports and um time it into process to it um for access control and for safety, especially because the virtual machine is public facing. Okay, so maybe it's a web server or it's an application server, whichever, and then you want to control access to it. So there are many ways to do that. If you don't want to use JIT VM, which I think it should be recommended after a while, if you get logins from different locations, okay, or different IP addresses, one of the first things to do to protect that VM is you may want to go to Azure Bastion, all right, where you set up a VM, uh, a VM with a private IP address and put a Bastion in front of it. To, to access that VM, you must go through the back chain. Right? That is one way. Or you do a side-to-side -side VPN connection, or you do a point-to-side VPN connection. All right. But if you're going to be generating public facing, you definitely want to have a DDoS in front and then a JIT VM enabled. Do you understand? So it's all working together. It's just your understanding of placement and resources. Okay. Sorry, I've not been on my chat in a while. I don't remove. <laughs> no, you don't need to. You don't need to. Actually. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right. It's very interesting. I'm going to give us some resources to take away. I'm giving you one. One was the labs. All right. There's a lot to learn. So also, what are the license requirements? First of all, it's free, 30 days. And then uh, I also show you some more stuff how we can. I think that's more important now. Because of time, too, would that be okay? Ah, uh, well, you can ask the audience. Uh, yeah, because they are, we're feeling like information overload. I'm hearing yeah. error, 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 uh, error. Yeah. <laughs> who is on? Who is on that table? <laughs> Maxwell, say something. I am, no one, something. I am yeah? on the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's do this. Let me finish this section. Just this section, and then I will point you to a resource where where you can start start well. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Let's let's just finish this slide. This is just a small one. This is still about dealing with network ports. Okay. And this is dealing with fire monitoring. This is remember we're about our log analytics agent. 
that we've thought is examining, gathering all kinds of data. Who opened which file? What time did open the file? What was the edited? Gathering all those data, keeping it in your log analytics. Then you, it's left for you to not decide. That's why you, you've heard of new phrases like hunting. Anyone heard hunting before from a technical perspective? People who do threat for hunting, yeah, that's what they do because there's a lot of metrics generated and then they just want to run certain queries, looking for certain metrics, you know. So, so these are VM threats. We have ransomware, threat intelligence, brute force. I'm sure we faced one of these before in our small lives. Anyone faced it before? Definitely. Who has a colleague of mine has? Okay, yeah, so we're almost done. Then I'll then I will spend the next 10 15 minutes. Yeah, we're almost done. All right, so you see, we'll face this every time. We we'll face this every time. We cannot even avoid it. All right, something we keep facing. And if care is not taking, guess what? I met some guys who said they actually paid those guys. They had no option, they had to pay. They were desperate. Well, the guy was able to have it. Whoever did that still gave them the crypto keys to release what they have encrypted. No, people would not. They don't take your money and do it. Anyway. So, <laughs> so we're able to take along this. Okay. Uh, brute force attack. Yeah, it's always happening. And these are all reconnaissance processes. One is still checking. And you know what to do. If someone is trying to brute force into your VF, you start any shut down certain ports. Set up uh, manage public access, public ports open, a lot of things you want to do around uh, this sector. And then here are the supported, the supported OS for Defender for Cloud. From 2012, R2 and above, that's for server. Okay, for server. 2012, R2 and above. And then you have your Red Hat 7.2. Uh, this is good. Red Hat. It's an enterprise product. CentOS is a community product. They are owned by the same company. CentOS means community enterprise operating system. Okay, that's what it means. CentOS is a Red Hat product. Ubuntu is strictly open source. Tools is, is premium paid for. Oracle is paid for. Amazon EC3 instances now are paid for. All these are from Linux environment. They all created their own. Okay. So again, these are comparing defender plans. So if we remember, if we move backwards a little, we see this defender for servers. I don't think I'll have much here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought we fixed this before. Enable. We enable this. Turn it on. So here is the plan. So we have. Uh, P1 and P2. P2 does a whole lot of stuff from here. You see log analytics, gives you free 500 MB, and all this like. While your normal $5 per server gives you this. So again, when you are when you get to that point where I'm performing recommendation, you will always check for the latest available option. So there's your button, just click. So on premise, you need to store Azure Arc agent for on premise. Uh, this is going to be a Microsoft Defender for endpoints. You've got multiple provision. We have the MD, you have Defender for endpoints. That is for on premise. These are all on premise, onboarding on premise into a Defender for Cloud. Yep. And I think we are, this is using Azure Arc and how it talks to that environment. You see, your data center, Azure Arc talks to your ARM, your ARM talks to your cloud. So this is where your Azure app sits in your on-premise, having its own private connection to Microsoft, okay? So here's the big network design. I wouldn't bore you with it, don't worry. And then we'll cost there. So we're not going to continue. I would have loved to go in, but right now I want to show something that will benefit us slightly more. So everyone, please work with me. We are going to a certain site now. I will share it in the uh, chat. Okay. I didn't plan this section, but it's all right. Time-wise, so, so, time we are 
one hour, one one hour forty minutes now. And now it's Saturday evening. Yeah, yeah. Guys, like guys, guys head are overload already. <laughs> All right. Well, so everyone, check this out. I'm sorry, you feel good. Yeah. For some strange reason, I can't view the chat. Oh, okay. My teams. Uh, you have a policy blocking you. It's a policy on um collaboration. All right. So use your Google and Google up. Um, but you can see my screen, right? Yeah, sure, I can. All right. So follow that stuff. All right. I'm going to show us certain articles here that will make us gurus between now and the end of the year. If you're really, really interested in this, okay? So um, here we go. Let's start from here. YouTube. So everything is all on this one page, all right? On your YouTube channel, here we go. Let's break it down to clearly. So you see it's broken down. So we have a lot of resources for Defender for Cloud, 55 videos, 109 for Sentinel, 25, you see? Now, because security is a combination of many things, it might decide, okay, let me just start from here now, all right? You see, all of this breaks it down. And then let's look at the Defender for Cloud that we started with today. All right, thank you. You can see what's new. Start with your how to ensure mass number see. Improving how, it's just about the how, 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 how. And before you know it, you know everything around it from storage to containers to key vaults. I mean, you know everything about the Defender for Cloud. Do we see that? Okay, so that's from here, the YouTube channel from here. Uh, that's one. Um, uh, then, Chugo, you would like this. This is for Chugo, he's an MVP. Uh, this community, I'll still drop this YouTube here and start. Okay, so here is this, sir. I would like you to fill it in. All right, okay. this, will, this will bring you into this community. Oh, All right, nice, so when nice. you're feeling you, you will ask if you're an MVP. Yes, once you that, you are in. No, just ask some information, all right? And yeah. you are in. Now, oh, what does this nice. give you? This brings you into, you can have access to a team section on your channel, on your team, where you get to be able to have access to all of Microsoft security products. Oh. All right, you have access to products. Yeah, and where, what do you mean by Maxwell? And where it can be used? Okay, sir. Can Defender for Cloud fetch me money, and how can it be used? Well, yes, uh, it's a profile thing first. I would say read your profile, all right? Maxwell, can you hear me? Read your profile, all right? Um, take, take cloud courses, Microsoft Cloud courses, and uh, take security courses, because before anybody allows you to touch a thing, you have to, you have to really show who you really are. They want to know what you've done, all right? Get involved in community stuff. Get involved in projects. So two communities like our next meetup, you could say, hey, who's who is handling next community? Can I be his co-presenter? And then I'll, and then me and you or whoever it is will think earlier and then you start building your profile that when you Google your name, Maxwell, what do you see? Then before somebody will allow you to have access into his environment and then they'll start paying you for consultation. If you want to be a trainer, you have to be an MCT and then through community work, community efforts, you not just here, you can go online, join different communities, go to meet up, volunteer to speak, you know, and then you get to have more connect, and then you get to uh, do more things, and then you get to be a trainer, and then you get fast speaking with global audiences, and before you know it, you're giving consultations to real time issues. Okay, so it's a journey. It's not a. I didn't get here with a flip of a finger. Okay, it's a oh, lot of work. Sir. It's a lot of work. All right. So quickly, so that's for YouTube. And then finally, finally, sir, this is the biggest here, the training. So we talked about Defender for Cloud. Once you are done, use your Microsoft account to sign in. You'll be given a badge called Microsoft Ninja. This is a Cloud Ninja. Here's the module. Module 1 to module 9. And here's everything here. Take it, consume it one after the other. This can be done in weeks. 
nine weeks, you are done. Are you saying that? And then all those guys doing DevOps that raise your shoulder, they must talk to you now before they do anything. <laughs> okay? So because there's DevSecOps, which is superior to DevOps. All right? And then everybody has to work hand in hand together. If you say no, you say no. So when you get up on it, you start getting global jobs, global interviews. You know, there's a lot you have to work on bring to the table. Okay? Uh, Trigo, this is one hour, 25 minutes, right? Yeah, we we'll stay at 6 o'clock. It's almost one hour, 45 minutes. So it's 25. We we'll stay at 6 o'clock my time now. Yeah, I'm looking at my recording. Yes, my recording says one hour. Recording has been going on one hour for five, for five minutes. You, okay. Ah, apologies, sir. All right. So, Is it up here? <laughs> yeah, it's saying uh, 1.38. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Time zone. Time zone. Time zone. All right. All right. It's Thank you very this... much, everyone. <laughs> I, I told you that there was a lot to talk about. I'm sorry. Nope. <laughs> Thank no you, problem. Trigo. Thank no you. I, everyone, if you have any further questions, hit me up on LinkedIn, all right? Just look for my name, Utichuku Mpama. Let me quickly just drop that my link here. Just drop my link. Uh, I dropped your link so that I'll ask you questions. I have a lot of questions. I don't know. Can you drop a link that where I can contact you? Uh, I tell my people Itemize it properly so that so that uh, when you drop your your data or your question, it will be easy for me to answer. Okay. Okay. Did you get me? Hello. My my network problem. All right. I think Hello. this is me. This is me. So just come to the messaging here and, and, and drop your message. You see, I get a lot of messages. I get a lot of messages. All right. So don't come here, drop some stuff, and uh, I'll, I'll always respond. Okay? All right, I think I have one more question. Yeah, Maxwell, that's my LinkedIn profile. I'll drop it in the chat. Oh, sorry, uh, I'll get it, Gary. It's in the chat. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It's a privilege to be here again. True, good. Thank you, sir. I am very All grateful for right. contributing me for this. I am grateful. Thank you, everyone. A pleasure. Thanks, yep. guys. A pleasure to have you guys. Bye-bye. All right, everyone. Bye-bye. Good evening, evening, everyone. Bye. Uh, good evening. Bye. I also drop on in Kedrim, okay? And we'll to go up. Bye, guys. Uh, and I'm presenting with Stanislav.